Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oleg. This is Bond. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we have another watch review from a Ballast watch company. I already reviewed one of their watches a while back, and that watch had one very specific and interesting thing about it. It had a bezel operation of the movement. So instead of a crown operating the movement, the bezel was doing the job. It was the first time I saw anything like it, and I thought it was really interesting and cool, so I wanted to share that watch with you. Well, Ballast actually reached out and offered to send another watch in for review, and I think this one is even crazier than the previous one. So, let's get started. First off, I wanna let you know that Ballast provided this watch in for review, and I don't have to return it, so I get to keep it. Of course, that's not gonna affect the review in any way, I just wanna be transparent with you guys. So let's start the review by getting the dimensions of the case out of the way. The watch has a 46 and a half millimeter diameter, it's 54 millimeters from one lug to another, it has a 22 millimeter lug width, and it's 14 and a half millimeters thick. This certainly is a big watch, a little bit too large for me personally, if I'm being frank, but I know that some of you guys out there do like these big watches. Looking at this watch, you can tell that the design is very unique, very out there, and I know it's not going to be to everyone's liking. It, there's just so much going on. So first of all, the case material. This is a titanium case watch with a sandblast finish. The finish on the watch is surprisingly good. I think they did a good job with it and uh, holding it in hand, it does feel very good and solid. Now I'm gonna say something that might be perceived as negative, and it's the fact that design, to me at least, looks like one of those uh, cheap Chinese watches that you find on AliExpress or uh, one of the other uh, Chinese websites. But when you look at the watch up close, when you zoom in, so to speak, when you hold it in your hand, you can tell that it's definitely not that, that the watch is much better quality than that. With that being said, the design is still bonkers. So I think with this one, you either love it or you hate it. First off, just look at these raised indices. There's one at the one o'clock position, one at the three o'clock position, one at the five o'clock position, seven o'clock position, and 11 o'clock position they're raised over the handset something that i've never seen before certainly an interesting idea certainly out of the box thinking so i gotta praise ballast for at least doing something different with their designs um, i don't know if i like it uh, but it certainly is different the rest of the indices on the dial are applied and they look like a regular watch so you have kind of a mix of these applied indices and raised indices something that I've never seen before. You also have this huge counterbalance on the seconds hand. Now, if you watched my unboxing of an Invicta Pro Diver watch, uh, you probably guessed this by now, but I'm not a big fan of the counterweights on the seconds hand. Uh, it kind of looks off to me. Something that I do like, however, is the semi-exposed date wheel with this kind of turbine design. And I also like uh, the, the overall aesthetic of the watch, so to speak, uh, the kind of uh, tough industrial look that it has. I just wish it was a little bit smaller and maybe uh, not so crazy over the top with its styling. Now let's talk about another out of the box thinking for ballast watches as the operation of the movement. So to wind the movement, you simply rotate the bezel and that winds the movement. So you don't actually have to unscrew the crown uh, and uh, wind it that way because there's actually no crown to unscrew. If you unscrew this little uh, latch here, you see a button. When you press on the button once, you can change the date by rotating the bezel. If you press on the button a little bit harder, uh, you can see the seconds hand stops sticking because it is a hackable movement. And now you can adjust the time with the bezel. Now I gotta tell you, it's very satisfying. I don't know how useful it is. I mean, it is useful if you wanna wind the watch while it's on your wrist, or if you wanna change the time while the watch is on your wrist, you don't actually have to take it off. Uh, so I guess that's the useful part of it. But it is very satisfying. And when I was wearing this watch, I found myself through the day kind of turning the bezel and winding the movement because it just feels good. At this point, you might be wondering what movement is powering this watch. So it's a Miyota 8 series movement. I believe it's a Miyota A215, 21 joules movement. Mine is running pretty accurately. I'm getting plus 12 seconds per day. Uh, so that's not bad for an introductory Miyota movement. Now, of course, this movement has been modified in order for the bezel uh, to wind and 
to control the movement. You can see it's a see-through case back. You can kind of see the movement because it's a little obstructed with this rotor. So again, the design of the rotor is very unique. It uh, looks almost like a, a turbine of a airplane. Kind of a cool design, I actually really like that. It's a unidirectional winding rotor, so you will have to deal with uh, some noise when you wear the watch and when you wind it, and the rotor really spins. I mean, it spins, and you can feel it spinning on your wrist when you wear the watch. Some people might be into it, some people hate it, I happen to like it, but I'm still gonna include that as a bit of a negative because I know that a lot of you guys don't like the rotor noise and the rotor movement uh, when you feel it on your wrist. It is a screw down case bag giving the swatch 100 meters of water resistance. I think they couldn't push it to 200 because of the unique design of the movement operation. I think 100 meters for this type of watch is perfectly acceptable. The watch comes in a Horvin leather strap. The leather strap quality is excellent. It's a thick leather strap because you need a thick and big leather strap to kind of counterweight and balance out the big size of the watch. Even has this huge buckle with a submarine on it. Quite like that design. Uh, and it does have quick release pins which is always a welcomed addition in my book. So there's one thing that I haven't yet talked about with this watch and it's the price. I think the price is the biggest challenge that Ballast as a company is facing with this watch. On their website, it's priced at 750 US dollars. I think that's just way too high for this watch, especially with that uh, introductory Miyota movement. Sure, it has a titanium case and sapphire crystal and the build quality is great. Also the packaging, is really well done, surprisingly well done. It's it's very nice box, it's a real wood box. Uh, the inside of the box feels and looks really nice, feels very luxurious, but still 750 US dollars is a bit steep. However, I did some digging around and I found this watch on watches.com. I also found it on uh, longislandwatch.com and the prices there are a little bit more reasonable, about 600 to about 550 uh, dollars. Uh, so that's not too bad. However, they're also sold through eBay and the eBay sellers do claim that they are authorized dealers. And on eBay, this watch can be found for about $500. So I think at that price, it is a better, obviously better value for money. It's still not perfect. I still think it's a little bit too much, but it's a little bit more reasonable. So that's the review of Ballast Trefilgar Titanium Automatic. I gotta tell you, I enjoy reviewing watches like this because they're so different from anything else out there. I like the innovative things that they do with these watches. Maybe some of them work, maybe some of them don't work, but I can appreciate a company trying something new. So uh, yeah, doing a review like this is a lot of fun because it's so different, so out of the box from the kind of watches that I usually review. So I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this Ballast Titanium watch. By the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing a simple Seiko 5. This one is actually from 1991, my birth year. I did a full review of this watch. I'll leave a link in the description below. Also in the description below, there is a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. Thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun and I'll see you guys next time.